We on? We on? We're on. Yup. Yup, yup. Is that Dean? I think that's Dean. <coughs> Maria. Maria's always here. It's good. I'm, uh, yeah, live again. I'm trying to do this every Friday. It just makes it easier if we do it on the same day. Just with a list of questions that I get through the week and then hopefully... That's definitely not Dean. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> I thought that was someone else then, but from the physique, it's not. Um, yeah, list of questions that I get over the week, and I'm just going to run through them. Hopefully, I can save the video this time and then repost it so other people can see, because I know it's like, uh, well, my watch says it's four in the morning. It's not. It's like half six, something like that. So if you have got any other questions while we're doing this, then fire them across, and we'll try and answer them. I am going to attempt to eat as well at the same time, so I apologise for that. But they're not hot. They're like uh, they're really hard, actually. It's oats, like blended oats with jelly, gelatine. So it's gone like mousse. Anyway. So I'll start with the questions anyway, and we can run through it. First one I had was around eating out on a diet and still maintaining some form of control, which I've done an actual whole video on, which is coming out tomorrow, I think. And it's just about employing some methods to use in order to keep yourself on track. Now these can be as extreme as you want in terms of not going out, which is what something I wouldn't advise doing anyway, purely because that's unsociable and you just won't make any friends doing that. So other ways you can do it, are to try and look at maybe if you're tracking your intake, saving some calories up in the days before the meal out or the night out or whatever it is. Uh, that way you can then give yourself a little bit more of a window or employ some kind of fasting technique, maybe on the day of the actual meal. Say if it's in the evening, you might fast till lunchtime and then eat small meals up until the meal or the opposite, fast the, the opposite the, the next day. So if you're eating in the evening, then the next day you wouldn't eat till like say lunchtime. Just shortens the window of opportunity for eating. They're all going to be, and there's another tip I think as well, it's going to be explained on the video that's coming out tomorrow, just in a bit more detail. But there are ways of still you know, maintaining a social life and being able to eat out. And most of the restaurants now, like the chain restaurants are on MyFitnessPal, so you can just scan in the stuff. So if you know where you're going, you can always have a look at the menu, try and make an informed choice and pre-plan it. So put it into the app like before. Um, just makes things easier. I hope that made sense. Cool. Uh, the next one, the discrepancies that are in my fitness power. So these, these come about because I don't know, people I think put them in there as in that like they input their own stuff. So they're obviously not correct. Or if you get discrepancies from one shop to another, they're always going to be slightly different. Um, so when you are scanning things in, always double check that they actually sound like they should, what they should be. Because there's times when I scan stuff in and it's just had zeros throughout. It's given you a calorie amount, but had zeros for any of the macros. So just be aware of that when you are using my fitness pal. And also, yeah, just double check that the amounts sound right because sometimes they're just really really far out and they can throw all your numbers off so yeah my fitness pal use it as a tool don't take it as gospel because everything on there is all estimations anyway the same as anything you do is just an estimation so um big shield shield's on and mate uh diet breaks i had a question well from one of my clients who are working with at the moment who is going away on a business trip he's away at the moment actually and in terms of tracking where he's going on a business trip, it's gonna be very difficult for us to just track as we go. With that in mind, what we've done is we've just said, right, here, have a diet break. So take these four days where you're away, we're gonna use it as a, a chance to just come back up to maintenance with your calories and just focus on, pro on protein servings per day. So we're taking three to four protein servings a day, getting in two to three servings of vegetables, and that's all the tracking that we're gonna do. So 
it's, it's taken away that whole stress element because he's away in a foreign country anyway and he's having to deal with foods that he can't really work out how they're tracked he doesn't know how they're cooked so with that in mind you're just going to you know, strip it right back to the bare minimum and just try and follow some basic guidelines and eat at maintenance um, yeah that's diet breaks that's a real short version of a diet break you, know, you could be looking at one one week well two weeks minimum up to you know even longer oh cool how much cardio do you do on an average day a week wow good question good question so in terms of my cardio at the moment <clears throat> nothing <laughs> uh, when we were just come off the last mini cut I was doing 500 calories a week which is pretty much nothing as well I just because I train in five times a week I just do 100 calories before each of the sessions which took about eight to ten minutes so no no time at all and um, in terms of cardio and how I would structure it for someone I'd look at doing the bare minimum needed in order to achieve what their goals are with taking into consideration the the deficit they're in with their eating and then structure their cardio within a calorie amount not a time amount because as you get leaner you're going to have to increase the time minute to still get the calorie burn if that makes sense so if you just do a calorie burn from the from the off start you, you don't have to worry about um, as you get leaner changing it um, I don't really do any high intensity work just purely because I think it impacts too much on the weight training side of things I think it's a preference if people enjoy that kind of stuff more then then do it also there's time factors that come into it it's obviously a lot shorter but if it's going to affect other parts of my training then I'm not going to be doing it because my weight training as we progress on can get pretty intense so if it's going to be playing into that I don't want to do it but hopefully that made sense dude uh yeah, be interesting to know what your takes are on, on cardio and, and what you what you've done or what you do. Um, cool. Other question on here, I got asked who to follow in the industry uh, because there is so much shit out there and so much rubbish. So just um, yeah, because it is confusing, especially if you're kind of new to the industry. But you you can read one thing online and then you can read a completely opposite thing next to it and you just like I don't know what I don't know who to believe or what's the truth the main thing I'd say is look for the guys who are uh, evidence based so they use a lot of the research to formulate their, their um, ideas uh, but then they're always open to looking at new research and new new pr pr principles and new procedures that are coming in and then they use some of their own experiences to kind of along with the evidence and the science because you can't really get away from the science it it's there and it's it's been proven so you have to take that as yeah this this is true but then you have to also take into account some experiences as well um, and be aware of the people who are very biased towards like one side of things because uh, that's complete nonsense you know not not one thing works for everyone so yeah in terms of who to follow like uh uh, Alan Aragon for nutrition type stuff, James Krieger, um, Brad Schoenfeld, uh, Eric Helms, all the guys at 3DMJ, um, Steve at Revive, uh, um, Mike Isretel, uh, who's on there, Martin McDonald, great for nutrition and trolling, um, Ben Carpenter put some great stuff out there as well. So there's, there's a whole host. I've probably missed off loads of people there, but just go for like the guys who are really pushing the um, the science, evidence-based back stuff. Um, so you, the next question, someone asked me around tracking their sugar intake. Again, this was to do with my fitness pal because when you log on there, it's got the uh, amounts on there, so your daily intake amount of sugar, and they are concerned about that adding in extra calories into their intake which isn't right because sugar in essence is a carbohydrate so it's already accounted for within your carbohydrate intake so the reason it's on there as, a, as an amount is because it's been worked out via the dietary re recommendations for 
however they use on whatever they use on the app. Um, I'd be inclined to remove it off your tracking bit and just track something like fibre because it's a bit more important to understand the amounts of fibre we're getting in an intake. So take that sugar bit off because you're already tracking for it within your carbohydrates, if that makes sense. It doesn't count as anything extra. It gets digested the same way. There's no magical thing that happens when you ingest sugar. Uh, and if you saw earlier in the week, I post the little graph that we put on there in America at the moment, the trend of um, obesity is rising still, whereas the sugar consumption is actually going down. So it's not even linked to sugar. See, sugar's not the bad guy. It does make things taste nice though, which is why people eat more. That is why. So the next question, someone asked, they physically can't get enough food in in order to grow. So they're struggling with getting their food in to not used to maybe eating such large amounts. When you are trying to put on lean muscle tissue, I'd go as far as to say it's a lot harder than trying to lose body fat because you have to go through those stages where you're eating food past a comfortable state. So in order to get around that, just blend your food up if you can or, or use drinks. Don't blend your food up. Use like a liquid form of drinks like um, shakes, make it up with like peanut butter, whole milk in there, just get the calories in and then you can drink it and it's just an extra way of getting in, you know, five, six, seven hundred calories a day. No question. Real quick one. Would you say the diet is more important than your exercise? I get many people unable to see results and blame the routine, but it is usually diet. Uh, it's tough, man, because you don't need to you don't need to exercise in order to lose body fat or change your body composition. You can just use it. You can just diet. The exercise is just a, is another part in order to, the reason we weight train is to maintain the muscle mass and and obviously people want to, the aesthetic reasons behind it. So you don't need the exercise as such, but they do work hand in hand because uh, if you're not programming your training in the correct form for what you want to achieve, it's not going to happen. So <clears throat> I'd say they're pretty much, you know, they're always as important as each other, as each other, but you don't need the exercise in order to diet down. So if someone isn't getting the results, then they they can it is then <laughs> the diet is to blame, or they're not telling you they're doing something right. Um, blaming the routine for training is, you know, that's you know it could be you can program in so many different ways. So I wouldn't say that that's necessarily right. It's usually if they're not getting the results, then it's down to some kind of diet issues or they're not telling you something they should be. I hope that, I hope that makes sense as well. Let me know if that doesn't, and I'll try and answer it again. Big deck, big deck is on. So yeah, sorry man. If you physically can't get the foods in when you're trying to increase your intake, then look at other ways of getting in or try and switch to some real high calorie dense foods. And don't be afraid to don't have to try and eat all your foods from like clean sources because it's going to be very difficult to get the, the amount of calories in. Um, so yeah, just try and use some easier ways of getting getting calories in by drinking it. And this is my last one. Uh, what foods would you use to keep fuller for longer, especially in the evening time? So. This is regarding satiety, so keeping yourself full. So certain foods will, when you eat them, will make you feel like you're full up quicker and <clears throat> full up for longer. So, and also if it's specifically in the evening, then I'd try and maybe push a lot more of the calories to the evening time anyway, to stop you from snacking when you're sitting around maybe in front of the TV. So get a hold of a, you can probably Google it. I've got one on, on the website satiety index of foods so foods that you probably want to use if you're dieting to keep you fuller like potatoes white potatoes really really satiating so you know if you eat those you'll, you'll feel really full up quite quick um i think you've got natural yogurts on there oats um things like that also soups as well which is one that's a personal one to me i found like thick soup type things they fill me up quite a lot because it's quite a lot of volume and then it feels 
it hits like stretch receptions and you feel fuller quicker. Um, this works the opposite way as well. If you're trying to then put on side and trying to get food in, don't sit there munching on like endless amounts of white potato because you're just going to get full up really quick and you're not going to eat. So yeah, it works both ways. So just try and understand what foods make you feel full and what foods you can eat a lot of. Hopefully that, that answered that question. Um, that's pretty much, that's all the questions I have this week. Seven on there. Thank you for all those questions that come in and questions on here. Uh, yep. Hopefully they all made sense and they answered in some kind of way. Got some information from them. I quite like doing this, so I will carry on doing it. And please, if you have any other questions going forward, then send them across. Like message me on here, or you can email me or on the Facebook page. Send me a message, and in that way you can build them up. We can get like a another list going, and next week get them answered again. I find it easier doing it in one go like this rather than just trying to do it separate little bits because it's just the time involved but hopefully you got something out of it and thanks if you were watching anyway i've got to go and finish this off because i'm doing very well <laughs> yeah. too much talking cheers guys